Oh my Some dear. of the hits in this one. Here. Love the college rugby league. Williams again leading the way. Murray getting involved as well. They come back towards the middle of the park. And oh, guess what? Another big hit. Knock on, so what a hit there. From here. Love the college rugby league. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Troy Hardy with the Auckland Rugby League, and uh, we're live streaming today. The SAS College Rugby League. Joining me is Corey Rossett. Corey, good to see you, mate. You look pumped up, ready to go. Yeah, excited for this one, uh, St. Paul's. We're really playing for a chance uh, to advance to the grand final. It's going to be uh, very difficult, you would think, uh, from here if uh, St. Paul's win uh, this match for anyone to challenge them. And of course, looks like uh, Southern Cross probably the other likely contender. And we'll talk to the uh, latter as we go through. But a uh, beautiful day for footy and uh, Fields and Great Nick as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think having uh, school holidays over the last couple of weeks certainly helps without having any foot traffic run around the school grounds. So the park, as you say, my friend, is in perla condition. Match managing today is Evelyn Brooker. She's down line side and she's got a busy week ahead, I believe. Bit of a tournament on out at Bruce Pullman. And uh, good luck to all the teams that are taking part in that. Yeah, that's right. Of course, uh, representing Auckland, uh, three teams there. Our very own Auckland Vulcans, who will join uh, Akrana and Counties Manukau. And, uh, got a peep at the Auckland Vulcans team list today. Pretty strong squad. Lisa Edwards in there, who played in the NRL women's competition last year, and um, a couple of international players as well. Awesome. Well, best of luck to the Vulcans, and, um, you know, hopefully you go there and uh, have a couple of upsets. And some of the teams are running out now. Well, one of the teams are. Uh, coming in over the far side as we see St Paul's warming up out there on the number one field at Westlake Boys High. And a uh, couple of new young fellas in that squad coming through the grades from year 11, I believe, Corey. And I know you'll probably go into a wee bit more depth around that later during the game. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's a rebuilding year for St. Paul's as well as Calston, who have sort of been the perennial heavyweights of, uh, of this competition over the last few years. And uh, as a result, uh, it's cool to see a school like Southern Cross Campus, who's done well at the Nationals in previous years, but probably not so well in the Auckland competition. Uh, they are sitting at the top right now, and uh, you'd have to say odds on favourites for the title. Awesome. Now we see the uh, Westlake boys out on our screen now. And... Uh, They'll be looking to put on a good front showing, you know, well coached. Jeff Morton, the head coach down here for these young fellas. And um, they certainly know how to play footy. They love, you know, moving around and uh, dancing at the defence line. And there's Jeff just on screen on the left-hand side there. A couple of uh, passing words there to, looks like one of his halves. And, um, and he's hurting a little bit after the weekend, Corey. As you know, we do the SAS Fox Memorial and uh, Northcote... Um, Got touched up a little bit by Howick over the weekend, but still in the, um, you know, top of the ladder up there. Bottom yeah, that's line. right. Yeah, still in second position, although it's an important game for them this weekend. They can sort mm. of drop to third or fourth uh, with a loss this weekend. So uh, let's get into that end of the season. It was a funny old game, wasn't it, really? Unfortunately, probably a game dictated by the, the field conditions, um, but great job from Howick. I thought they were outstanding, uh, particularly defensively. Yeah, and I think defence, as you've rightly said, that's what won them that match, and uh, they were really strong around repelling them off the uh, try line for the Howick boys. Um, for Northcote, too, I think down on their roster, you know, they're missing a couple of their uh, big boppers and uh, suffered another injury on the weekend. Hopefully Dave Munner comes good. So as we get ready for the big clash here today... <laughs> And um, the boys sort of come up to the halfway mark now. There'll be a wee bit of a chat. And I think, have they flipped the coin yet? Just having a look out there. They haven't flipped the coin yet. I'm going to ask one of the guys. No, we haven't. So we've got one of our brothers on the line looking after us today. Yeah. And um, so they're about to do that and have the chat. And, uh, Corey, how would you get on there with the uh, mobile phone? You up your score on Candy Crush? <laughs> <laughs> For those at home, I was looking up the uh, ladder and uh, with two rounds to play at Southern Cross, who sit at the top and are on 12 competition points. Two points back are St. Paul's, and it's a four-point lead on Westlake. So this is must-win for Westlake, pretty much. 
as we head into the uh, final round next week. There'll only be two points up for grabs, so a huge, huge game for both teams today. A little further back, it's uh, Mount Albert Grammar, who are still in with a chance, and they're in must-win territory as well. Calston, uh, pretty well out of the race at this point. we we'll take a minor miracle, and uh, not even sure if that's mathematically possible, but uh, important to note, Calston are in a rebuilding year. It was a wonderful year last year, but they lose you know, Conrad Tua, yeah. um, you know, Kari Aoka, uh, two guys that are pretty hard to replace, and uh, it's a fairly young team there. Uh, at Calston, although we've had the, the pleasure of calling them a couple of times and uh, the future does look bright. There's a couple does, of really yeah. good young players in that squad. Yeah, I think they've got a you know, a fairly good new core young group coming through. And look, on the um, the sporting program out there is led by Dwayne Mann, who's an absolute legend, you know, uh, as you know, in the game of rugby league and just a legend and being a personality and a bloke himself. So big ups to Dwayne. I know he'll be doing a lot to... Um, uh, you know, get the league re-established there as the new talent starts to come through on the conveyor belt. So good to see. Big shout out to Crown Lift Trucks as uh, one of the major sponsors for the Auckland Referees Association, also the major sponsor of the Fox Championship. And speaking of that, we're off to Tiara 2 Roosters, uh, Jack Colvin Park on Saturday, and uh, we see them go up against Papakura Seagulls. Yeah, should be a great game. Second and third on the ladder, um, and really a, a win in this match, and a fairly significant step towards okay. securing promotion. Or, uh, yeah, promotion is, is probably the correct term to the first division qualifiers for next year. Teller have been wonderful. Of course, uh, using a number of players who played first division football for uh, Mount Albert last year, Jared Tua, laying a great platform for them. Anthony Galton in some sort of uh, try scoring form as well. There's not too many weeks uh, where he doesn't grab at least one. So, ball on the tee, ready to go. And it will be Westlake to get us underway, kicking away from the car park down here at Westlake boys and uh, St. Paul straight into it rumbling up through the middle of the park of course a big day for St. Paul's when you've got to come across the bridge it uh, all has to be factored in with travel times it can take a little while it's in that uh, horrible time sort of between two and four o'clock where the uh, congestion is just starting to build around Auckland here's a nice strong carry forward by the 21 Matthew Savilio Ball loose and tipped on. Now that's off the hands of Moala from what I can see. Play on is the call and it's cleaned up by uh, Jeremiah McGrath. Centre field comes St. Paul's. Good line speed though. Dag gets left behind. Straight back up to the feet though. It's a quick play of the ball. Left side they come. It goes to Moala who kicks. Not a bad kick either. Nicely up into the hands of uh, Kjartan Hatch. He brings that oh. ball straight back and gets whacked. Dag now the dummy half. Slow play the ball. Atkinson Dag appealing. And in the end they uh, burrow out via Maxwell. Quick play of the ball now. Atkinson Dag off the back end of it. He's looking to link up with a Ford and then eventually finds one. I think that's Sam Wilson who was a standout the last time we were here at Westlake calling their game. Atkinson Dag shuffles to his right. Short side now come Westlake. Dribble the kick in behind. Chase looks pretty good from Westlake and back to clean up is McGrath. But they're going to trap him here. Great work from Westlake and repeat set coming up. Nice set finished off with a well weighted kick. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I was about to say, I was looking a bit conservative, you know, one off the ruck getting down to the kick. But um, capitalised off a really good completion there and um, the ball landed where it needed to be and uh, you know they pick up an opportunity so it'll be interesting to see whether you know they probably might settle two or three times again and then look to shift uh, but we're about to find out so fielded by one of the big boppers as well who takes it straight back into the line and that's a very good carry from David Toya Options left and right now for Westlake. The sun starting to set in the left-hand corner of the field from our commentary booth. Atkinson Dag, the dummy half. 
Nice quick play of the ball, and then goes to Wilson. Wilson hits the line hard, and it takes three or four to bring him down. They're not far out from the line now. Westlake hunting first points. Three minutes gone here on the North Shore. A centralising settler now from the 13, Kiramiti Harris. Yeah, have a look here, group. Set play coming up. Goes up the oh, back. Bobble. It's messy. It's off the leg, though, and now... Offload, a little bit of second phase, finds it to the hands of uh, Ollie Parsons, and in the end, Parsons has nowhere to go and does really well to hold on to the football in the end. In fact, my apologies, this is Parsons on the ball now. Hard to make up some of those numbers there. Takes a little bit of a bounce and ends up in the hands of St. Paul's, who survive it. But uh, some good promising early signs here for Westlake. Looked pretty strong through the middle of the park early, Troy. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, St. Paul's, they managed to weather a wee bit of pressure there. They were certainly, you know, getting um, a couple of waves of attack put on. Just to hear the whistle blow. What's he saying? It's a penalty inside, to yeah. St. Paul's. Telling him to get back on side. So um, St Paul's now have an opportunity to chew a few metres as they head off over the halfway mark where we sit today on the opposite side of where we normally call from. And um, weather's really, really good. And it's actually quite a clear picture to be shooting from this side. So well done, Grant, from CTAS, our live stream partners. So St Paul's back into it. Good first up carry from Tofilao. Sikahili. Moala, Moala, short ball and getting rid of one. Now St. Paul's rumbling through the middle of the park via Sosini Miti. Quick play the ball as well on the back end of it now. Sikahili gets ragdolled to ground. Not far from the line now, St. Paul's. Left edge they come. Moala, nice crisp passing. Here's your first try. And it's Jonah Pelotakupa. But put it down to the quick hands of Sione Moala, stationed himself out on that left edge, got the ball to where it needed to go, and then from there, Pelota Copper, too powerful, over he goes. SAS sporting replay, you can see them shifting there to the left hand, and that really created it there. Nice fan bump, dropped the defender, which opened up the opportunity to sort of slide through with a couple of guys on. And uh, really, at that point, we get a quick play of the ball, just jumps out from the dummy half and uh, had the momentum and the roll on. Westlake boys scrambling to get on the line here, lots of pressure on. Fantastic long replay here we're getting. And we can now see it shift to the left hand side, they created enough damage in the middle to create that out and fantastic fend, that's yeah. the way to do it. And try time, four points. So not bad after weathering the storm down there. Um, you know, Westlake boys were on the on the attack there for a couple of sets. They get a penalty, kick down into the half, manage to you know get a couple of good play the balls off, and what do you know, Gory, try time. It's a kick to come, Sony Moala, right up against the sideline, pretty much. Yeah, unusual. Um, live streaming from this side of the park and that um, flags are down it's uh, always yeah. interesting in the college rugby league uh, we well, it typically don't which one you go to you know? so. yeah, some of the uh, linesman signals can be a little unclear but uh, safe to say that one was away 4-0 it is St Paul's College off to a good start 7 minutes gone here at Westlake boys and a reminder uh, these two sitting next to each other on the ladder. The winner all but assures himself of uh, entry through to the grand final. So back underway off the bit of Parsons. Takes a bounce, but it uh, will be a kind one. And they bring it straight back and then taken low and put onto the ground. Good technique from Westlake. Centre field that come. Atkinson Dag. And dropped ball. So handover. Great work from Westlake. Wrestle possession back their way. And a fantastic opportunity now for them to hit straight back after conceding points. Yeah, it'll be nice to, um, you know, capitalise off that 
Uh, great defensive effort there, so they get an opportunity as they're sort of getting ready set to pack in. And it'll be interesting to see how they go. You know, so far in the early stanza, we've really just seen one off the ruck, one off the ruck. And, uh, you know, knowing Jeff Morton is uh, coaching style, he certainly knows how to shift the ball around the park. So Jansen takes the first carry down towards the left. Atkinson Dag then comes centre field to Parsons and then to Toya. Excuse me. In front of the Hayden and Rollett uprights, options left and right. Atkinson Dag says we'll go to the right. Links with the second rower. This is the 12, Bailey Clark, Leo Lahi. Set heavy back towards the middle of the park now, and they will start it with Toya, who takes three defenders with him. Taking the ground, he wants a quick play of the ball here. Parsons is organising out the back, and looks like they're putting a little bit of shape on here. Westlake, although they get rushed. Great work from St. Paul's, and that looked like uh, Toffee Lau it was who came up to completely shut down whatever plan there was there. Right side they come now. Jansen, kick, it's deflected. Is that six again? Yes, it is. It is. Yep. Six more to come now for Westlake as they look to hit back. Conceded points about three minutes ago. Kiaden Hatch now jumps out and steals a few metres before the contact meets him. They're around about... Would say probably 15 out from the line here. Atkinson dag to Wilson. Wilson knows only one way. Straight and hard, driving the legs. Toya. Very power-based game plan so far. Here's Wilson off the back fence. It misses him and then goes to Parsons. And now there's a gap on the left-hand side. If they can execute, a chance oh, on. But fingertip stuff. I think he was going to run out even if he did yeah. manage to bring that one in. So uh, St. Paul survive another one. Ten minutes gone and it is the Central Auckland Zoo lead. Four points to nil here at Westlake, boys. So, you know, cunning plan so far. They've, um, when they've gone to open up their shoulders, it looks like, you know, they're creating half a chance there as the boys get ready to pack in. And I think um, Westlake playing sort of up-tempo as well. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's probably a... Um uh, uh, they've gone away from the previous game plan we've seen them employ in the last few years where they were a team what a that hit. sorry <laughs> mate did he just got <laughs> dropped oh can we yeah, have a quick replay on oh, maybe no let's not replay that <laughs> that may not have uh, been quite so exciting for the man on the receiving end of it as we uh, wait right. for a break and play but um, as I was saying you know previous years we've probably seen this Westlake side they've been probably a smaller side in the competition but this year with those two big bookends Toya mm. and uh the other one, Sam Wilson, um, just able to power through the middle of the park. Look, sorry, mate, uh, just back to the um, uh, the hit that we've just seen on screen. I don't think there was any malice in it. Um, just, you know, big colliding, didn't miss. And um, they're checking them out now, the trainer, just making sure that it wasn't a head clash of any sort. And um, looks like he sort of passed the initial eyeball test as referee's about to chirp the whistle and get on with the match. Oh, he's got to go. Yep. So he is coming off, and that's what the call is. Yep, Good and to see. Uh, that call came in in the end, uh, was overridden by Jeff Morton, and uh, it's interesting, I had a good chat yeah, with yeah, Jeff yeah. about concussions yeah. over the weekend. Yeah. Of course, Eddie Finorta has that, missed mate. a few yeah, games for absolutely. them. Um, at North Code, and yeah, you're right, staunch is the right word. He uh, does not take any risks with that, and even though the player was questioning it, doesn't he's matter. Okay. No, Jeff's all over that stuff, mate. He's, so the, uh, make no mistake around the, uh, the head stuff. Player off the field is uh, Tomasi Tomaniko, and onto the field it looked like to me the 17, Robin, Her Robin Herbert, I think. Yeah, yep, and he's gone out to the left edge. So St. Paul's working it up through the middle. There's a good carry. Leighton Finau, quick play the ball as well. Sekahili on the back of it, and this kid is lightning quick. He will punish you if you don't get those markers all lined up. Loves a quick play of the ball. And delivers one himself. Moala turns back on the inside and brings another forward in. And you can see they're breaking a lot of these tackles down low. Typically getting rid of the first one here. Sekahili off another quick play of the ball. Straight through the gap here. Sekahili, they might not catch him. They will not catch him. Clean. Clinical. Sharp. He actually followed that um, straight off the first play of the ball that you called early. 
And uh, the settler came in, and he just sort of peered up and just drifted straight into the hole and bang, acceleration out. So referee points to the spot. The try is confirmed for Vaka Sikahili, and we'll see here on the replay. It starts with uh, Moala just coming back to the middle of the park, and this is a really good carry. Sort of gets rid of that first one down Just low. And, yep, as Troy pointed out, you can see sikahili has got his eyes on a quick play of the ball and a dart straight away. Gets a nice quick play of the ball from uh, his prop as well, his uh, back rower. And then from there, the line's broken. They're struggling to get back. And the man probably closest to him was the referee. Yep. So what normally happens in that situation, you saw the two defenders going back. They had their back to the play of the ball, trying to get back into the line. No one's jammed in next to the referee. Sikahili's just run straight at the ref. He stepped aside and said, you want to go through here? And he said, yes, please, I want to go through here untouched on my way to the try line. Four points. A favourite theory of John Acklin's, that one. Always run uh, at the referee. He says it's just a personal space thing that players generally give a little bit of space say, between yep. themselves and the referee. So it's not a bad idea to run towards Absolutely. the match official. Yep. And uh, more often than not, there may be a little half gap there. So, uh, and, you know, tackling contact sport. Real easy to, um, you know, uh, what's the word we're looking for? Um, take that opportunity and create it into points. And you see it a lot in touch football. You know, they'll run at the referee, and if somebody's not jamming in next to that, you know, there's always just going to step out of the way, and basically you've got a big hole on the D-line. So the kick is good from Moala. Takes St. Paul's out to a 10-0 lead. 14 minutes gone here. And uh, Westlake have not been without their chances. Spent a little bit of time down the other end, but... St. Paul's fairly clinical in the uh, limited opportunities they have had. Yeah, they've had to go the length of the field to do it, you know, during their sets. It's not like they've had constant pressure down there inside the Westlake boys' 20. You know, they've basically come from long range, but they've gone through a set of play the balls to uh, put the points on the board. Um, yeah, so Touchy's just been given a... A bit of a touch-up. <laughs> get, get <down laughs> Aussie there, ever. Oh, fantastic. Love the College Rugby League. St. Paul's back into it. That tackle sort of carried him up four or five metres in the wrong direction. Nice carry from Sione Vahu. Could play the ball as well. Now back onto the inside, nice and that's a brilliant carry there from the 21, Sosini Miti, who's had a couple of them already in this one. Sikahili hunting a quick play of the ball. He'll shuffle to his left to Moala, and then they got the back. There's space on the offering here for St. Paul's, but Westlake do well to scramble and uh, just recover. 15 and a half gone. It's uh, St. Paul's who lead by 10, and they're hunting more now. Hatch goes up under it and takes Great it catch. beautifully. Kiarden Hatch went up and there was never any doubt that time. I believe uh, Kiaden's a graduate of the Region of Origin series as well as we see a penalty right. for a high shot here which will uh, march Westlake out of their own end but back to the Region of Origin not long now until we kick off the next round of that. A few changes this year we're going to see uh, girls involved as well and a little reshuffle of the uh, thresholds for the grades as well. Look, a competition you and I certainly really enjoyed last year. Troy. Yeah, man, it was a highlight of the um, back end of the season, you know, and we all enjoy watching the, um, you know, the Fox finals and the, or any of the grand finals, but to be able to see, you know, the best of the best play from the original regions and, you know, come out and actually go at it was actually a, a really cool tournament and big hats off to um, Andy Hay on the uh, football development team, you know, I've done some exceptional work around that. Uh, I think Vigo's helped out along the way, so a little, little <laughs> nod to Vigo. Um, but no, for all of the team there, and um, uh, really impressed that they've managed to you know, expand it and grow it this year and to include the female. Now, the pause is for an injury, and this looks like a second head knock for Westlake. So crisis on the uh, Westlake bench. They're down to two. The new man onto the field is going to be Kyson Kingy. And we'll try and catch uh, who the player they've lost is. It was from foul play, which I think will be a free interchange in College Rugby League. But Pat Carthy's just, not listening just, to this. No, so. I'll just go to the Red Book and have a look. Okay, and we get the re reset here. So Parsons boots that one into touch. Nice little crowd across the way there, watching the live league action here today. Sponsored by SAS Sporting Apparel and uh, live stream images.
images brought to you by CTAS. So Seni Miti involved in the tackle that time. It's uh, Clark Leolahi with the carry. Atkinson Dag now the dummy half comes centre field. Still looking for the little red book, Corey. Atkinson Dag to Toya. Boy, he's been excellent so far. Some really good carries. Parsons is stationed to the left. Instead, they'll go to the right and go through Jansen to Hatch. And Hatch looks to accelerate through a little gap but gets dumped on his back and uh, the ball comes loose. That's a knock on. So once again, the St. Paul's line responds very positively. And uh, they're up quickly right now, limiting yardage, but also doing really well to close down the second phase. Absolutely. And I can confirm, Corey, Pat must have taken my little red book. And it's no longer here. I can't find it, mate. So we're back to the action. So, St. Paul's. Feed the scrub. Oh, we've got a nice little lounge break here. It looked like he was going to offload, but thought better of it as he tucked it back in for a quick play of the ball. Strong carry. Boy, tell you what, they have uh, broken the first up contact more often than not so far today. St. Paul's right side, they come now and hunting a little gap. This yeah. is the four, Atinga. I like the look of him, mate. He looks dangerous. Sikahili to Vaihu. Then up with uh, Sosini Miti. Sikahili on the end of it, looking for a half gap. Stands up his opposite number. 19 and a half gone, St. Paul's leading by 10. Moala kicks for himself. Moala's chasing hard, look out. Hatch is gonna have to get to this one quickly. Does so, will he escape? Does really well in the end, Hatch. Although, well, 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 might have spoken too <laughs> soon. No, manages to stay in. Fair size mismatch there. Worked through now for Westlake as they ruck it out. And look at that, just driving them back three or four metres post-contact. Looking for some work out, looking for a hard runner to get in here and start rolling the sleeves up. Nice offload, but the tackle was complete. Yeah, let's play the three. Oh, big contact. May not look like it on the screen, but we can certainly hear it from this side of the park. Toya. And a knock on in there. Disappointing for Westlake. Just starting to go somewhere on that set and uh, the ball comes loose. Samoala with the feed, so Kahili clicks from the back. Oh. And now they put one down. Both and knock way. Knock on, Westlake put way. one down. Well, three knock-ons in the last 30-odd seconds. Completion rate harder to come by than a red book here today. Well, you know, we've got to remember they've only been back at school two days after two weeks of being off. I'd, True. I'd be struggling as well. Do you like going to school, Corey? <laughs> Is this a trick question? No. I used to love going to school just so I could play in the college rugby league, mate. Well, there you go. It's more a chess club kind of guy. Off the back of the scrum now, Westlake get into it. Less than four to play. In fact, about three to play in this half. Toya. Good, strong carry. He's been their best today. Yeah, he's done well. Takes him up over halfway. A chance here to... Get one back just before the break, perhaps for Westlake. Atkinson Dagg goes to his right to Wilson, who turns playmaker. Tell you what, getting involved in plenty of defence is uh, Jeremiah McGrath. Atkinson Dagg now off a quick play. The ball comes back in field to Toya. Toya says, get out of my way to one. The ball comes loose, but it's a strip.
And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, this weekend we're off to Crown Lift Trucks Fox Championship Clash. Tierra 2 Roosters up against Papakura Seagulls. I'm looking forward to that one. And you'll be able to get to the live stream through www.aucklandleague.co.nz. Yeah, and rumours are that uh, Sal and Pearson's got a special surprise in uh, store for that match. He's going to sing us a little song, I think, if he makes it down there. So for those of you who know Selwyn, something for us all to look forward to. Westlake now back underway. Kirimeti Harris bumps the ball forward. They'll only probably get one set in here, Westlake. Atkinson Dag directing traffic, links with Toya in the middle, and this is a brilliant carry. Probably needed a fullback on his shoulder there. Rolling through the middle with ease right now at Westlake, but can they convert it into points? This is Parsons to Jansen. Overlap now starting on the right-hand side. St. Paul's scramble well and contains Simon Philo. They're not far from the line here, Westlake. Little dart out of dummy half and a crash over. We can't make that out on our screen. Let's wait for confirmation. The referee points to the spot. It's a try. And Finau Paya, I think it is, that's gone over. Like I say, it was in a very dark patch of the field, so difficult to make out. We'll see if we can catch it on the SAS upright. And looking at the SAS sporting replay here, you can see them shifting along the right-hand edge. Now, just drew on a couple of defenders here and looked like he was going to go down, sort of propositioned the ball a couple of times and still fighting. Now, at this point, St Paul's are trying to get into the line there's a wee bit of shake being created for the Westlake boys. Instead of coming to the open, they went short. And he just snuck around the corner there. And I think he might have burgled that one, Corey. Can't see from this far end, but um, the referee's awarded the try, obviously, as we wait for the kick to come. And way over on that far side there. Just there he is. CTAS boys have found him. She's a big long kick. And wow. one flag went there up automatically, <laughs> and the other flag's going, well, I'm having to think about that, but no, the flags are up. Yeah, I kid you not, that flag went up before the ball had even reached the post. But anyway, it uh, looked fine from where we were sitting. And all of a sudden, Westlake are back in this contest as we head to half time. No siren yet. Six points to ten. We've just been asked if it's half time, and that'll be a match manager's question. <laughs> As we get ready for St Paul's to kick off. One minute to go, I'm told. Shout out to uh, Mikesh from St Paul's, long time manager of the school. The school's rugby league team, I should say. Westlake, back on the charge. How much confidence will they take from that? Now the bookends have actually impressed me so far for the um, Westlake boys, and that number eight's been getting through a ton of work. Yeah, David Toyer, he's been wonderful. Atkinson Dag goes to his right. Amazing what a try can do. Westlake already down to the 40 here. Atkinson Dag will come centre field via Toyer and little change of direction yeah. that time. He's not just bash and barge, oh, nice and he's offload. got an offload as well. Mm -hmm. Offload. offload yep. Jansen on hand. Oh, <laughs> that was some fair contact mm. there. And mm. ball comes loose. Now a penalty. Do you look to the sticks? Well, look... Looking at the time, they have to do it. Then it'll be the shout from the sideline. Yep. Morton straight up to the feet and uh, pointing to the two. So they get the, yep, he gets to have the crack at the two points. And um, I can just sort of come back off the edge of my seat there, Corey, as the tension was mounting. It's a great set, wasn't it? They sort of travelled 40-odd metres through the first three and then uh, a nice little bit of second phase from uh, our man of the moment, Toya. And off the back of it, a penalty for the strip. And it's right in front. It is from a little way out. But you would think uh, we go to the Sheds 10-8. And for all our rugby league fans, and especially for, you know, all the college guys that, you know, follow the football along with the female, is that the action replays along with the full footage of each and every single 
College Rugby League match will be up on our YouTube channel, the RL TV YouTube channel, and you can get to that too through the website, www.aucklandleague.co.nz. Parsons on target and reduces the deficit to two points as we head to Oranges. A short break before we resume with the second half action here at Westlake, boys. Nah, I'll, I'll, I'll be careful. 